I'm Eve Grzbowski. I've been very blessed to have yoga in my life for almost 40 years. I've come to think of it as a companion for life, um, and that's because I started relatively young, um, when I was 27, and it's taken me through the various transitions in my life, through ups and downs and emotional upsets and major surgeries and so on. And I um, discovered yoga through a friend taking me along to a YMCA course. So she actually enrolled us for 10 weeks and I didn't know what to expect. But um, I was delighted from the first class and I think particularly appreciative because the teacher was probably the age that I am now. And I was inspired by her story that she'd been recommended to do yoga by her doctor, which was kind of outrageous for the times. And uh, she was a grieving widow who hadn't been in very good health, and he suggested that yoga could help her. And uh, she took to it and became a yoga teacher and then um, kind of paid it forward. I think um, I didn't really um, think about it at the time, but um, my parents had died rel relatively young, and I saw that yoga could be a kind of um, healing system that would take me into, um, you know, longevity. I probably did something after I finished that course that not very many people do, which is I went home um, with a book that I'd bought by Richard Hittleman and I made three by five cards of the poses that I found in that book so I could actually s start my own yoga practice. Um, I was a new mother and I didn't really have a chance to get to other classes and courses. So I took those cards and I actually moved them and around and I made sequences for myself. Um, I should have seen the writing on the wall that I would one day be a yoga teacher, but I wasn't quite there yet. And then uh, in the 80s when I um, had an opportunity to study with Martin Jackson. Um, I did his yoga teacher training and then um, started off on my own path. Um, in the beginning, I think probably like a lot of yoga teachers, um, I had very few students and I felt like I was a pretender. I was in a process of learning how to teach and learning how to teach something that was still something that um, I was practicing. Um, but now that's almost 30 years ago. Um, along the way, I started a school, um, which was probably audacious um, in 1985. There weren't that many schools in Sydney at that time. Um, but it was a great learning experience about how to run a business and um, be successful in another way. And by um, the 90s, I was ready to take another big step, and I started um, teaching teachers, pe people who wanted to train to do yoga. This was just a kind of a prototype of a training because in a way I was trying to imitate what Martin Jackson had done, but I needed to find my own voice and my way of doing it. But um, out of those courses which were run at Sydney Yoga Center, oh, probably a hundred teachers were trained over the years, um, and some of them are still teaching and, um, you know, uh, you know, making a name for themselves in their own way. Then, training yoga teachers to teach is particularly rewarding because everyone who becomes a yoga teacher takes yoga that much more out into the world um, and in their particular voice. Um, when I got to menopause age, I um, 
decided that I was going to do something completely different. Um, I resurrected some writing skills that I had when I was at university, and I started uh, writing a book which was published by Simon and Schuster. And um, then the um, spin-off from that was I felt like I could write articles for yoga magazines and journals. And that's been tremendously reward rewarding and another way to spread the yoga word. Um, I wrote another book which was an e-book um, for yoga teachers, The Art of Adjustment. And um, my pet project at the moment is a yoga blog. So I feel like I've moved with the times. This was one of the interesting things about my personal journey is that, um, as I said, I started out as a, um, a student of an Iyengar teacher and then became um, a teacher in the BKS Iyengar method. And that was uh, great learning. Um, that system that Mr. Iyengar has founded is very um, rigorous. It's a very valuable way of um, approaching yoga and teaching yoga. But at um, some point, I decided that, um, or um, maybe was surprised, even shocked to discover that there were politics involved with um, the yoga world. And in that um, Iyengar world, as much as um, other kinds of yoga, I suppose. And that made me want to stand aside um, from the Iyengar Association that I'd been um, involved in. And um, I waived my certificate at that time. And um, it's been a very interesting process because um, I thought uh, at that decision time that I'd committed um, career suicide, that um, you know I wouldn't be valued as a teacher because I didn't subscribe to a certain method. Um, and then I realized that there was a certain freedom in what I was doing and that instead of losing as much as I thought I was going to lose, I actually gained um, a way of practicing and teaching that I needed then to evolve for myself. And I felt like, um, I like this quote, which is from Goethe, I think. Um, I felt like I was um, a wheel turning from my own center. And that took, um, not instantaneous, it took a few years to get to that point. And then, um, I wouldn't say that I've gone completely in my own direction because I'm still, um, underpinned in my practice and in my teaching by a lot of what's valuable in the Iyengar method. But um, I've certainly been influenced by other um, inspiring and powerful teachers along the way too. There's um, another part of yoga which uh, I think is inherent in it, I don't know if everyone discovers this, um, which is the ability to create and visualize your life and the way that you want it to be going. So once you um, calm down the chitta vritti, then you start to be able to see things clearly and what is important to you and what you want to be doing in the world. So as part of that process, um, a while back, I decided that I was going to retire from my teaching practice in the city and start a new life um, in a rural setting. And uh, over the last year, that's what I've been doing. It's, um, I think, everybody's dream, um, but not necessarily always fulfilled in the easiest way. But um, what's helped me is my yoga practice in making that transition, and also the notion that um, I can establish a community where I am now in the same way that I've done. Um, in Sydney and in other yoga communities.